Japan's nuclear crisis, a belligerent, belligerent North Korea, and a growing Chinese military, these are just a few of the issues facing the commander of U.S. forces in the Pacific. Admiral Robert Willard is standing by with our chief Washington correspondent for a Bloomberg exclusive. It's a pleasure to have you both. Peter, good to see you. Lisa, thanks very much. I am joined here by Admiral Willard. Appreciate the time. Thanks for thanks, joining Peter. us. It's great to be here. Uh, you're responsible for, as the head of Pacific Command for roughly half of the Earth's surface, your area of responsibility, 36 nations, including uh, the nation of Japan. I want to get, first of all, your sense of what's happening in Japan with the nuclear threat there, the nuclear crisis. We had the elevation there to a level seven equivalent to uh, Chernobyl. Is this a situation, in your view, that's getting worse rather than better? No, I think it's uh, actually getting incrementally better. I, I, I'd like to proceed by just saying uh, that on behalf of all America, we offer our condolences to the Japanese people who have not only dealt with an immense disaster, but uh, have shown a great deal of courage in doing so. Uh, but I think the situation at Fukushima, we regard it as static, uh, not yet completely stable, but improving every day. You're responsible, of course, for the 50,000 U.S. Uh, service members who are in Japan, their dependents as well, their, their families. What is your sense about the, the risks facing uh, those U.S. Uh, service men and women? I think the, uh, the risks are manageable across Japan, and, and certainly it's uh, an area approximate to these nuclear reactors within about 50 miles that uh, are of greatest concern, I think, for both us and the Japanese. Um, for the uh, individuals that are residing elsewhere in Japan, uh, it's a matter of uh, the smokestack effect from Fukushima <clears throat> in the uh, reactor plume and understanding uh, what effects it may have when the wind blows in the wrong direction. Let me switch gears and ask you about China, uh, the rise of China, and it's the, not as an economic power, but also as a, as a military force as well. What do you make of China's rising military, and what kind of uh, challenge does it pose for you in your position? Yeah, thanks. I, I think first, uh, it's been a remarkable rise uh, of their military power as well as their uh, economic influence and, uh, and uh, just you know, growing, burgeoning uh, capabilities across the board. Uh, in terms of challenge, the, the challenge posed to Pacific Command is to manage a military-to-military -military relationship with now this very consequential military that we're coming in contact with uh, ever more often. And I think it's important that we achieve a level of dialogue uh, with the Chinese such that we can grow a constructive partnership out of this and not a competition. You were with uh, Secretary Gates when he traveled to China. There's been a big push by the United States to continue those military-to-military -military talks. What's your level of confidence that those are going to continue? Yeah, thanks. I was actually not with Secretary Gates, but observed his sure. visit to China uh, very carefully. And there was a, a reciprocal visit that's already been scheduled. Uh, General Chen coming to the United States. Uh, here in the next several weeks uh, as, a, as a counterpart visit, and I think that's positive. I think uh, our ability to sustain this uh, through time and past perhaps government to government um, you know, bumps in the road uh, is really the test, because in the past, uh, China has been quick to suspend military relations, and, and we'd like that to not occur in the future. Many more things we'd love to ask you, Admiral. We know you've got to get back to Hawaii, your responsibilities. Thanks for joining us here on Bloomberg. My pleasure, Peter. Thank you.